when I heard that Coach Porter got the job, then I, you know I made some inquiries into it. I uh, had a couple of guys that I knew in uh, in Jackson, Mississippi, that would had LSU ties that knew uh, Coach Porter, and then they talked and everything, and then that's sort of the common ground there. But and I really didn't know him. I really didn't know Coach Porter. I knew about him. Uh, it had a chance, uh, you know, if you, if you follow football and if you're a fan of football, which I am, I, you know, I love the game and uh, love coaching the game and love being around the game. And, you know, when you, you, you study it and you research it, you, you know, the name of Larry Porter keeps coming up. You know, a great football coach, great recruiter, great motivator, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, a people person. So, you know, that part intrigued me. And then when I had the opportunity to meet him, uh, in uh, New Orleans and uh, have lunch with him one day. He was just, uh, you know, he, he's one of those guys that you just knew had it. You know, he had that it factor. And uh, at that point, uh, you know, I made up my mind if I had the opportunity, if he given, if he uh, gave me the opportunity, you know, I wanted to coach for him. And there's, there's two things that really sold me. It was his vision for this program, uh, his ability to communicate that vision. And, which I think is critical. And uh, the most important thing to me, because I've been doing this a long time, and I realize how difficult the task is, and uh, it's very difficult, if not impossible sometimes, to be successful if there's not a commitment above you. And that's the one thing that I wanted to know from him, and I, I got that sense that there, there was a commitment above him, that they were going to give him what he needed. If it were just about scoring points and winning football games, you know, I wouldn't coach it. I wouldn't advise anybody to play it, and I certainly wouldn't let my two grandsons play it. But I do love it. Uh, it's the intangibles that the game teaches you, how to persevere, how to overcome. You know, you know we, we live in a feel-good society today. Uh, you know, everybody says, well, if you, if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. And, you know, you go to the chemistry class sometimes. It doesn't feel good. You don't enjoy it sometimes. Uh, or you don't feel like getting up and going to work one morning, but your wife and your children are depending on you. You know, just how to persevere. Because in life, there's adversity, and the game teaches you how to handle adversity. Well, I think it's critical, again, that we win football games. you got to win, you know, and then that's the task that we're charged with, and I think Coach Porter knows that. Uh, then you got to also improve facilities. You got to develop relationships, and at the end of the day, that's really what it's about. It's about relationships. It's about developing relationship with the high school coaches and the administrators, teachers, the educators in the area, your alumni base in the area. And it's uh, at the end of the day, if 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 you have a good relationship and you have good communication, you've got a good chance of being successful. For us here, defensively anyway, it's a big deal because Conference USA plays so fast. You know, and whether whether there's a different conference you're in a different conference or not, you know, that's that doesn't affect us right now. You know, what we've got to prepare for is playing in in Conference USA, and the officials let the offenses play so fast, which I don't agree with. You know, and but but again, I don't have to agree with it. You know, I have to adjust to it, and so you know, and that's one of the things that Coach Hobson and, he, and he's a great defensive coordinator, great defensive mind, and we're. we're working on trying to adjust to the speed and the play of the game. But, uh, you know, Conference USA is a great conference. Jay is one of those young men, and I call him young. He doesn't call himself young, young compared to me, but uh, got, got a dynamic personality. Uh, again, has a, the rare ability to communicate extremely well. I've been very, very impressed with him. The most impressive thing about him is his knowledge of the game of football and his passion for the game of football. I, I, you know, and I, I don't want this to sound wrong. Sometimes I look at him and see me, you know, 20 years ago. But he is very, very passionate, very, very fiery about the game. And what he believes in, he's going to fight for, and he's going to stand up for. And uh, I think he's got a tremendous, tremendous future ahead of him. I do know this, that the most critical aspect of your football team is the chemistry of your coaching staff. If you, if you have poor chemistry there, you're going to have poor chemistry on your football team. If you have poor chemistry on your football team, you're not going to be successful. And again, that's one of the things I think Coach Porter's done a great job with is meshing personalities and individuals and allowing personalities to be personalities, allowing each coach to coach. And, you know, each coach has got their own little strength, and, they, and every coach has got a strength, every coach has got a weakness, and, and being able to 
bring that staff together and let them utilize their strengths and try to work on the weaknesses but not put themselves in a, in a situation where you have to use those weaknesses and, and just foster an environment where people enjoy being around each other. There is something special about Division I football. There's something special about working and preparing to win a national championship, working and preparing to go to a bowl game. And that's when I miss Division I the most during bowl season, you know, when people were preparing and getting to go because it's sort of a reward, uh, you know, and it's also an extra spring practice as a coach is concerned and everything. And I, I just missed it and look forward to that part of it again. For me personally, is to be the best football coach that I can be for the defensive lineman, for them to play as well as they can possibly play. At the end of the day, if, if we win the national championship and I have three or four defensive linemen that are all American, but they play up to 90% of their abilities, I've let them down. You know, I've failed. If, uh, if I can get each and every one of them to play up to 100% of their abilities, then I've been successful as a coach. But as a football team, obviously our goal and Coach Porter's goal, and it starts with him, is, is to win and, and compete and win championships. And, you know, we, we're going to line up and expect to win every game. Cooking. Really? Yeah, I love to cook. Any particular oh, I, I love Cajun dishes. Uh, you know, I love gumbos and, uh, and that type of thing. Love cooking meats. Uh, everything but desserts. Don't cook desserts. My wife says uh, that's her their area of expertise, and she says she's a sous chef. I enjoy that part of it. I don't necessarily like cleaning up after myself. For the, for the last several years, uh, I have, and it, I, it really was from Gene Stallings when I was with him at the University of Alabama, he used to say, never confuse work with accomplishments. You know, everybody, um, or most people work hard, but not, it's not always productive work, and I think that's critical. The one thing that we all have in common is 24 hours in a day. How do you best utilize those 24 hours?